Welcome to our December edition of Let's Get Growing and who thought that we'd have 60 and 70 degree weather in December but despite that fact let's get growing. Well in December at least you don't have to mow unless you've planted cool season grass or you have grassy weeds. Remember we're not going to scalp the lawn in the spring and we're going to make sure that we water deeply six inches before a freeze. Make sure to keep all your newly planted landscape and annuals watered, particularly before freeze. Remember if the ground is full of air that temperature can drop really really low but if it's full of water it'll freeze at 30 or 32 degrees and protect your root system on your plant material. Perform the major pruning of trees during the month of December and it's a great time because most of the leaves are gone and you can cut that mistletoe out. Remember that you've got to cut out at least a foot behind it to get all of the hyphae, which are like roots, only a fungus has hyphae and they go into the actual limb on the tree. So we want to cut that off so that it doesn't grow back. Just knocking it off will not work. It's also a great time to spray dormant oil on your red oaks, crab apples, camellias, and don't forget your crepe myrtles to get that crepe myrtle scale. Dormant oil is different from the superior horticultural oil that you'll use in the warmer temperatures. Dormant oil is a lot heavier and will kill those little eggs that are hanging on through the winter. Remember to fertilize your pansy and other winter annuals, kale, cabbage and don't forget Swiss chard make great winter annuals. This is a great time to plant shrubs and trees because not only are they on sale but contrary to popular belief they will be putting out a root system so that when the spring hits they'll have a root system and they can just pop into growing and become beautiful parts of the landscape. Also remember to plant those wallflower seeds and make sure that they have soil contact. If you're planting them in the grass, just turn your rake over and rake it in and they'll hit the ground and you'll have winter growth that results in spring blooms. Make sure to mulch all your bare spots and your new, newly planted plant material. It acts like a blanket and will keep it at least 20 degrees warmer and also keep that needed moisture in. And remember to water before a hard freeze in any month because I've mentioned that. The ground will freeze at 30 or 32 degrees when it's full of water, but if it's full of air, dry, and it'll get so low your roots will freeze. And don't forget, feed the birds. I wanted to explain and talk about plants that you receive from the florist or maybe even at the grocery store. If you'll notice, it has no hole in the bottom of this container. In addition, it was being grown in an interior environment where you can see it got a lot of sun down here and then it got into an area where there was no light hardly whatsoever. And so the plant had to elongate in order to pick up more light. There was a lamp right over this which allowed this palm tree to grow and this English ivy. But this over here was a colancho, which is a succulent. So you have a succulent, you have a palm, you have dew, and you have ivy all growing in the same container. Beautiful when you first get it and then starts to decline. Different light, different water needs for all of these. So we're going to split them so that they grow on. The first thing that you're going to do is remove it from the container, which it's been in here long enough that it should come out in a hole. This is a decorative material called Spanish moss. It grows out of the trees in Louisiana and other very moist areas. So we're going to take it and get it out of the picture. And then we're going to start to divide this into the different plants. Now this is the Jew. And this actually can be grown outside and would have very beautiful dark pink color. And we're going to take that 
and put it into a six inch pot. So we're, we've added a little soil to the bottom because you can tell it needs to be propped up a little bit. And then just gently put some soil in it and firm it into the container. Nestle, nestle. And then we are going to hit a little cutting that fell off. And all we're going to do is, you can see, this is called a leaf node at the very bottom where the leaf comes off. We just want to make sure that we bury that, make a little hole, we stick it in, and we cover it up. Now the next most important thing is to water this little baby and give it some more sunlight and it will be a beautiful plant for you this spring. The next one that we're going to remove is this palm because it's going to reach a height in the house of about four feet and you can see how extensive the root system already was. Now we don't want to put it in too large of a container, so we're going to just put it into this six inch pot. And then we just want to make sure that we get soil all the way around. This is the little calancho that were, all of this fell off when I moved it. And as you can see, the stalk on this, there's no roots alive. The stalk is dead. So what we're going to do is, we're gonna take this little four inch container and we're gonna fill it to the top of the soil, and then we're gonna take just a little cutting. We have a little node at the end. I've made a little hole with my finger. I stick it in and cover it up. Now, in addition, these two can make, be made into cuttings. So you can see this little stalk is dead. I'm gonna break it off. And then I'm going to make another little hole. A little bit more soil. And firm it into the container. We have one left and it's this Hedra Helix or an variegated English Ivy. And you can see some of it had already rooted back around on the other side of the container. But we're going to put this one back into a container that doesn't have holes in it, but we're going to be very careful about the amount of water that we give it. And remember that water will stand at the bottom of a container and it can be bone dry at the top. So you have to make sure that you fill the soil and make sure it's thoroughly dry before you water. A little bit of soil in the bottom. We put our ivy in. See this little bit that was growing on the side? I'm just gonna settle it in. And then fill it with soil. And these plants will thrive. As I said, south window is where you'll get most of the sun that you'll need and make a beautiful interior plant. And remember, plants grow in spite of us, not because of us. And if you'll just give them a little bit of water, a little bit of fertilizer, they'll grow on for you too.